Welcome everybody to our annual uh, 4th of July meeting. And the first thing we're going to go with is Mr. Mayor's got something to say. Good. Thanks, Tommy. Come over here to the microphone. Yes, Welcome sir. Welcome to the big boy and girl meeting room. Uh, I don't know if you all get to meeting here very often or not. How you, how you, you got me? Jeff. Okay. Well, I wanted to come and share the bad news that we got today from Drew Morgan and Nick Haig that both of them have scheduled uh, travel um, on the 4th of July. I, I take the blame for this because I had a conversation with them and, and even Luca, you know, I haven't gotten hold of Luca, so hopefully he's here. I wouldn't want to go back to Italy at this time, but eh, maybe. Um, but I, I wanted to come and say, hey, I'll, I'll bend over backwards to, uh, to get some replacements. Now, they won't be people that just came back from space like Nick and Drew, but uh, we got uh, about 15 astronauts, active astronauts living here. So hopefully they're not all on the same, maybe they're on some kind of trip together. I don't know. But anyway, they're, they're taking advantage of the time to, to go. And I'm sure that they all felt like NASA was uh, obviously declining because we did the official request to be totally legal. And uh, we got a declination letter from NASA saying, hey, because of COVID, no astronauts are doing any. Well, you know, they can do what they want on a day off anyway. So we went that route to be totally legal. And then after that, we were going to just say, well, yeah, NASA said no, but you can say yes and come over here. But then they both said, well, we're traveling, so we can't, can't do it. So um, I kind of came to find out, uh, to hear from y'all what, I, I don't want to stay too long though, because I, I got dinner, but uh, yeah, Tommy, put that card away. <laughs> but um, I uh, would like to, you know, if we break this thing up into mini parades, I'd like to try to get an astronaut in each one of the mini parades, if that's possible. If you tell me it's like seven mini parades, I'm gonna choke, but I'll try. <laughs> I will try my best. Now, some of them might be retired astronauts at that point, but we will, we will work uh, as hard as we can. And that works too. Get, get, get people um, to, uh, to show up and, you know, I don't know if you've thrown your theme completely out the window or what, but, um, like to try to help you out. I mean, I feel responsible. Who else could we blame but but me, right? For this, so. Totally. Totally. so anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I'll, I'll wait to hear, you know, tomorrow what, what y'all are going to do. If I get out of your hair, but uh, sorry, we will we'll still get some astronauts. We still love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, you know, they come for the breakfast. You know, they don't come to be in a parade. There's like. <laughs> So if we can, you know, I guess we're not offering them breakfast, but. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So now we're going to move on to the, if everybody can go ahead and look over the minutes and approve the minutes. I hate this thing looking at me over here. If you have anything to say, hey, <laughs> if you have anything to say, I have a mic so you can, I can put it in the mic if you have something that you want to add. But the only thing that has happened so far is Mayor um, just said that the astronauts that we had planned to have in the parade aren't going to be able to make it, so he'll try to do his best to get some other ones. But that's that's it so far. All right. Everybody have a chance to look over the minutes? Everybody approve the minutes? I make a motion we accept them. I second. Do we need to say who's, who approves or who seconds? Does it Nope. Okay. So we'll move on. Now we're doing to call to order. Oh, sorry. Communication from the public. James, we can write it to you, baby. No okay, so we move on. No communications. So then now we're gonna talk about breakfast. We are canceling the breakfast, even though I had the most Phenomenal centerpieces I've been working on for months. So let's cancel this theme and do it next year. <laughs> She's kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're only going to have, what, 25 people? We're going to just invite council members and maybe a few dignitaries like Larry Taylor and maybe Greg Bonham or something. And for what? What are you talking about? What part? For the, yeah, the announcements before the parades, breakfast kind of area? Yes. 
it would be, yes, it would be those dignitaries, uh, the local ones here, which equates to about 25 to 30 of them. Does that count their families? We would put a stipulation it would be a plus one. Only? That w only. So then 50. So yes, roughly around 50. Are we going to try and serve them anything? No. The We're plan not is do not the box? to serve. No. No. I contacted uh, Chick fil A. And, uh, Turn on your microphone. I, I contacted Chick fil A and uh, they have not responded. Big surprise. Sorry. <laughs> Very disappointing. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. I mean, I don't, I don't okay. know what else. So. With us not really having a place for everybody to gather and talk, have we thought about just canceling breakfast altogether? Let's take the money from the breakfast. Let's go get some nice banners made up, and you can advertise on the side of the fire truck. And we have two school buses. The station and I were talking about that. It's a great opportunity. To, if they're going to be driving through the neighborhoods, they can advertise with a nice banner that tells everybody what's going on. And advertise what? Just telling them what's going on thank you friendswood appreciate everything i've done look you know we're made it through this see you next year come up with some type of i don't know saying or something onto those and just take the breakfast and it gives it gives it gives everybody as dignitaries and a chance to stay home and be with their family until those little parades come through the neighborhoods and stuff like that how are we going to let them know where to go and what to do we'll send out the parade uh, notification <laughs> like we normally do and at the, you know, staging area for each parade. So, again, we were going to have just the meet and greet, so to speak, with those 25 plus one, which equates to about 50 dignitaries here at City Hall, in the back, outside, you know, social distancing, just so that they have an idea of what's going on. If we had the Grand Marshals, that would have been an opportunity for us to introduce them, recognize them. Also, we are... Uh, going to be uh, doing a small video with some of the past uh, Fourth of July members. They could have been present. We could have introduced them and thanked them for their past services for the many years. So that was uh, the initial meet and greet was just a part of that. And then give them time to go to their stations, give them an idea where the parade route, a reminder actually of the parade route, and then they would just make their way to their uh, various locations. Are we going to... Um since we've had so many cancellations with the dignity or the grand marshals and whatnot, should we just, I'm saying this selfishly, but can we just cancel this year's theme? I mean, why even have a theme if we're not going to really be doing anything That's true. towards we could, it? We could cancel it. Yes. And just move it to, I mean, just make it a thank you thing. Yeah, and just make the overall parade a thank you, mm -hmm. basically. The corona thing. I mean, uh, thank, you, thank you thing. Coronacation. Coronacation. There you go. We didn't have a future entry anyway. Yeah. We never had a chance to do those. Yeah. Also, I think that we should drive it home that it's a, the 125, like maybe a cute banner that says, celebrating 125 years of a parade. Did you think we'd not do it this year or something like that cute like we didn't cancel it because this is our 125th anniversary ideas and that gives our better breakfast things for next year <laughs> not that they they're all how much how much advertisement has been out there yeah, on the current zero theme? advertisement zero. nothing on the current theme mm -mm. yeah almost zero it's on the website the only no. problem i face is the flyer has been made, and I asked permission for that flyer but to you be made. It yeah, we haven't publicized right? it. No. Just change the year for next year. Just shred it. <laughs> Not the flyer. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Be we could flyer. use it for next year. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the designing, just use it for next yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. Archive it. I'm open to that. I guess you, you could put it to the group for a discussion and a vote. <clears throat> we do have our past. Um, Grand Marshal that we would need to notify. But, you know, he considering her age, she we wouldn't would want her to be participating yeah. in that anyway. Yeah, agreed. And extend the invitation for her next year, um, obviously. Mm -hmm. But with things the way they are, she may not want to get out 
yeah, for in who? public to begin with. Yeah. Once it gets closer. I feel I like mean. we're at a point right now where everybody's going to understand any changes that we make. And I feel like we need to do what's best for our citizens. And, you know, just going out into the public and saying thank you and still celebrating the 4th of July for what it is and passing it off till next year, I think, is a great idea. I agree. I agree. So I'll make a motion that we cancel this year's theme and pass it off till next year. I am second it. <laughs> we know that. All right. No. Or do we have discussion? Motion approved. No. Motion approved. All in favor? I was going to say, I mean. All in cool. favor? All in favor? All in favor? Sorry. Did you raise your hand? Aye. Yes. Yeah, I raise hands. <laughs> All opposed? <laughs> Looks like it passed. Motion approved. Motion, what? Motion approved. Motion approved. I'm not used to these ways. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> All right. So we move on. Oh, Lord. We move on to the parade. Uh, we're going to have one or a Multiple. few. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions about how we can do a parade, again, safely for the community without everybody congregating in one general area. Uh, so city staff has come up with some options that I'll pass off to uh, James to discuss. So staff has been working uh, really hard to come up with uh, at least three variations of a type of parade that we can have all centering around reverse parades uh, like the uh, current theme that everyone's been going with right now because of the uh, situation that we face with the virus. So uh, we're looking at, as the mayor mentioning, uh, breaking it up into uh, mini parades so that it would allow us to maximize uh, visitation, uh, visibility for uh, the various neighborhoods and communities to get a chance to see us so that, again, since you've changed the theme for them to thank us and then also for us to thank them for staying home to help uh, reduce the spread of the virus. So. Uh, that's kind of one of the options that we're, we're looking at. Uh, there also are a couple other options that we're waiting to determine how that's going to affect based on uh, results that we're going to get and information from the states as, as it relates to permitting and such for, for the parade because of the virus. We're not sure what the permit's going to look like. So um, we have a, actually, we have a, yeah, we have a printout of the, uh, various routes, and what we'll do is kind of circulate that and let everyone take a look at it. And uh, if you have any changes, suggestions, now is the time for us to kind of uh, make those uh, free changes. Yeah, we actually have it. Yeah, we're gonna put it up. Can we put it up? On the PowerPoint? Uh, we have a chance to put it up on the screen so that everybody can get a chance to look at it. There we go. So if you take a look at it, the idea behind it is to uh, take the mini parades and hit the major thoroughfares uh, around town. So your major streets such as Sunset, uh, Black Hawk, um, uh, what's the other one? Um, Bay Area, Bay Boulevard, Area yeah. West Boulevard. West Boulevard. So some of those areas which will allow the maximum visibility where people can come out and see you know, the parade as well as uh, maintaining uh, great social distancing. As you can see, Black Hawk is a very long street, so if someone came out, uh, it would obviously reduce the chance for, uh, for contact and at least helping individuals to stay within that six feet uh, guideline that, uh, that CDC is recommending. So uh, those were our thoughts about how we could actually, like I said, have, continue to have a parade and then allow for maximum visibility uh, for various residents around town to see the parade and experience it. So any thoughts or questions or comments, we can, uh, if, you can if, you, 
if you can see the map and understand it, or if you have any questions about it, we'll certainly uh, email it. Terry, you have you to come up to that. the microphone, the podium. Okay, so, so my question would be, we going to have one parade that starts and then stops and then no. begins at another time, or I mean, no. how's this going to go? Seven together? different locations, seven different mini parades. Okay, so you're not going to have the same floats or vehicles or what have you. I'm not going to have any parade. floats or vehicles. Right. So the, the the we would have at least two police cars, a fire truck, one of the uh, type of dignitaries or grand marshal, because you heard the mayor mention that he would try and get seven. Uh, for uh, astronauts, so then that way we would have one astronaut at each one of those locations so that everyone would get a chance to, again, see a, uh, a dignitary and or uh, a grand marshal. Okay, but it won't be the same. We would it open the up the parade application to the public like we normally do with restrictions as far as no walking entries, no bikes, limit to the number of people for each um, uh, float only because there's so many of them. Uh, if we had 75 floats, you know, that's at least over 15 entries per parade. Okay, are they all going to start at the same time? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. So logistically, who's going to who's going to run the show? Who's going to is, is you going to do all the show? Me. And people are going to be on the street, correct? I mean, everybody's going to be in front of the houses. I mean, what, to me, what's the difference between running down the main street like we always do and just six feet apart? Because down the main street, you're asking for 40,000 people to come to one or one either, mile location. Or either put them in a car, windows down, something like that, yeah, uh, like so, a drive-in. So the theory behind this is you have seven locations. They mapped out. Each one is about two to four miles in length. So you're already at 14 miles instead of the one-mile stretch that we have here down 518. Um, plus, there's places for if people want to stay in their cars, they can park their car and look at the at the sh parade. Um, they can, you know, maintain a little area where they put their lawn chairs and sit there and watch the parade. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as big, but you know, this parade that we we host has 100 entries with multiple vehicles per entry. Um, you know, you're you're talking almost 150, 200 vehicles. So spreading it out over town, I mean, it's, you're still going to get a parade that probably a lot of other communities are, it's normal for them. Um, and it's just going to be a way that you're just lengthening the, the distance that you're covering. But there's no, not going to be anybody policing, you know, hey, stay, stay apart, you know, and all that stuff. I mean, obviously we'll do the best we can, but I mean, as... I mean, that's what it all comes down to. We're just offering to. more space for people Everybody's to be able to maintain their own social distance. Get together, you know. It's the same way the grocery store, you know. People aren't policing it. However, there's the ability to be able to do that on your own if you want to. There's one coming down Friendswood Drive, a short one? Uh, no. 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 Oh, I thought you said yesterday. There was going to still be one so we could keep our record of one. Apparently that's full record. That would be another option. For the parade, to the keep only, it my only question to that is how are you going to keep pe people from still showing up on Friendswood Drive? That's and that's why we came up with this Plan B. I can't read it. Sorry, <laughs> it's too far away. That's the thing. If the map is actually laying on its side, if you straighten it up, the forest is up on the top, is on the bottom side. So we're open to any discussions from the committee as far as the parade route, how we can effectively, you know, parade and have people see us and then also maintain, you know, all the things that we need to do to keep people safe, social distancing and, and so forth. So is there any ideas or thoughts from the committee? Do you have any questions, Mr. Scott? No. Okay. Do y'all have any recommendations on whether which way we go, either 518 or the seven mini parade uh, locations? I don't see seven. You got to come Well, up there's to the two mic. close together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, this, this right here is two separate ones. 
this is one, and then this one kind of goes next to it as the second. Can you read the street names and or affiliate it with a neighborhood? Sunset Met or Sunset Drive, pretty much all the way down. That's one parade. Then Stadium all the way around to Melody is two. Blackhawk is three. Uh, Bay Area is four. Winding and Leslie is five. Falcon Ridge and West Ranch Drive is six. And then Castle Harbor, San Joaquin, and Mission is seven. So we're just going with two scenarios? Yes, that's all we came up with for now. Uh, there's a couple other scenarios, but it will determine whether or not there's a permit involved from the state as far as 518. We don't anticipate being able to get a permit from 518 from the state to come down 518. So um, that's going to be an issue for us. Normally when we get our recommendation from the state, how long does that usually take to get to us from it usually takes about two weeks. Wow, that would be cutting it way too close. So we'll know you applied last week? Yes. So second week, June 8th maybe? Second week of June? So June 12th, so we're gonna be pushing it right to the winter. So mm -hmm. one recommendation would be what we talked about just, mm -hmm. okay. So then you wanna talk about that one? Or you want me to say it? No. No? So just to see if we can go with the motion on this one? I wouldn't make a motion on this at all. It's just say that we're going to reconvene okay. you know, once we find out. So we will have to have a meeting right. sooner than normal to, to go over this again. Right. Okay. Early June. We're going to have to get, yeah, probably early June, definitely. Okay. So we'll just, we'll just go ahead and stay with what we have on that one then. We'll just continue working on the best way to provide a parade. Obviously, we'll need to come together the 1st of June once we get notification from the state, and then we can finalize you know, which direction we'll go and how we'll handle the parade. But we are going to have a parade, some, some form or fashion of it. So, Stacey, how, what do you think about if we open the applications to the public after June 8th? So I would think that once we decide officially what we're doing, uh, we'll open up applications. Um, the good thing is, is that we have a lot of record of people who have participated with us in the past. So um, just looking at, we have some very uh, reliable entries that come every single year that would be very flexible that we, you know, we could tell them, hey, this is what we're doing, see if they still want to participate and kind of send them to where, where we need them to be. So my thoughts were, um, you know, each parade would have police, fire, EMS participating. Uh, I'm sure the school district will send out some type of vehicle. We could probably get some city vehicles. Um, so every, every parade will kind of be similar in that sense. And then as we get citizens involved, uh, we'll just kind of divvy them up and see how they work out. Um, obviously, we'll limit the number of participants in each float to maintain that social distancing and that uh, small groups numbers. Um, I don't know about the judging and how we would do that. And now that we don't necessarily have a theme, I don't even know that it's necessary. Um, we literally just celebrate the independence. Um, and then, so basically what we would do is I send out an email, I contact all the people that are particip participating and I tell them where to go anyway. So it would be the same thing. So say we have that group with Sun Meadow. Um, I would tell them, hey, let's meet at the harbor. So everybody will gather at the harbor. We will literally make a line and we'll lead with like something like a fire truck with sirens, wake up the neighborhood and you know go through the route. Um, obviously this would all be posted on social media. People will be expecting it. They can go to said areas, you know, it's convenient for them. Be the same thing as them coming down 518 except in different locations. I, I think it's something that we could we could make work again with everything going on. The fact that we're even still celebrating 4th of July as best we can is a lot more than other cities are doing. So I think this is a way that we can still get out there. We can still celebrate with uh, the citizens and they'll still enjoy it. Um, I don't see logistically how it's going to be a little more complicated, but I, I think we can make it work. Even if we had a committee member at each 
location and they literally ride along in the parade, um, we can we can organize it, I think, pretty well. Anybody have any questions? I have one question about the logistics. One part of it is come to the podium, please. <laughs> One question about the logistics of it is, are we blocking side roads and such off like we normally would because 14 miles of streets is a lot of barricades that we don't have? Mm -mm. So they're not going to be doing any shutting down of any kind of roads of any kind? No shutting down any roads, but as we go to an intersection, we have the police vehicle there and they will stop that traffic to allow the, the uh, flow of the parade. All right, perfect. Thanks. So uh, just to put in perspective, the fire department does this at least once a year when they do Santa rides through town. Um, we've also done it uh, most recently for just a thank you for people uh, staying home. And it, we've never had any issues. Everybody comes outside, they congregate and in their little areas, and then they go back inside when the parade passes. So, And, and we're not doing it at 8 a.m. We're doing it at 10 because that is one of our complaints that we do get. So um, hopefully that will alleviate some of those complaints. Yeah. Has, has thought been given to the parade all the way from, you know, from 2351 all the way to say Bay Area, straight on 518, instead of keeping it from 2351 to, to the City Hall, just make it a lot longer. And, did, uh, you did know, we start with, dealing with text dot we have to get a permit area. for any uh, oh, you get a tech stop roadway. Anyway. You all are talking about getting one anyway, I think, or you're not. For, we already for submitted it for 518. The, the permit, the annual permit that you get doesn't allow you to go that far. The, all parades are limited to less than an hour, or one hour or less, so we can't parade any longer than that. Okay. That's part of tech stop's uh, requirements and rules. Okay. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Go ahead. Mm. Wow. I'm sure y'all have thought about this, but what? why couldn't we do, like, start at Stevenson Park, go down 518, 2351, all the way to Sunset, all the way down Sunset, just make the parade route a larger thing for people to spread out further? That way one thoroughfare wouldn't be closed down for the entire time. So you're saying not shutting down the streets at all, just doing it? No, 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 no. You'd, I mean, you'd obviously have to shut down those major thoroughfares, but it, just spreading out the parade itself to where more people have more room to spread out and social distance. So I just don't see... Yeah. I mean... <sighs> so for us to get from... 2351 essentially to City Hall, it takes about an hour. We're usually pushing that hour. So if we are gonna ask for any type of permit, I mean, there's no guarantee that we would be off of 518 and onto 2351 and then, you know. Well, I just worry with these short with like little parade routes that people are gonna try and crowd into these. I mean, Sun Meadow's a big place, that's a but if that's the miles. closest people can get to it, they're gonna go flood into those, I mean, not just Sun Meadow, but any of them. I mean, it doesn't go past certain people I know's houses, and they're going to have to go someplace to see it, so how are they going to? Well, that brings in Gary's question. We'll have to close the streets with barricades uh, if we wrap around to Sunset, 518 and Sunset, instead of a short mini parade uh, like we planned with the other ones. I just don't see how this is going to, I don't know. I mean, doesn't come anywhere close to my house. I'd have to go someplace to see it, just saying where I live. And so I would have to go park somewhere and get out, set up my chairs somewhere. Now you're going to have people coming from all the different areas into these short spots. That's my concern. How is that any different than them being on Friends Would Drive? I don't Maybe I'm just not seeing the big picture, but this is... I know, I know a lot of work went into this, trying to make it happen, but I'm, I'm with her, you know, because 
realistically, you're you're making all different hot spots. One yeah. of us have one big hot spot. You know, if people are going to come out, either stay in the car. That that's the safest way. To stay in the car. That's what every everybody's good with. And that. if we're going to close down 518, why can't they park on the other side of 518 that we don't use and stay in their cars? It'd make life a lot easier for everybody, Gary, everybody. I, I just don't see how this is going to be any different than Friends Would Drive. I really don't. My mm-hmm. grandkids doesn't come anywhere close to their house. They're going to have to go someplace and either sit in their car or get out with their lawn chairs and sit in somebody's front yard, for that matter. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Am I wrong? I mean, I'm... No, you make a valid point, but again... Traveling down 518, you're going to have eight to ten rows deep of people on top of one another on 518 when you have a parade such as what we've done in the past. Four I or think, five rows deep here. Well, I think you at least minimize a lot of that with some of those spots because there's various options of where people can go. And we're not circul- We're not going to be isolated in one particular area down 518. We have 14 miles of street compared to one mile. Uh, that's on 518. And it's actually more than 14, I think. Yeah, if you look at just going down Blackhawk itself, look how long Blackhawk is. There's but, plenty of real estate to be able to spread out along Blackhawk uh, for individuals to see the parade. But how... So if you have one location, you have 40,000 residents coming to the one-mile thing. Right. If I, we divide 40,000 by seven, we have 5,700. Right. And that's if every single person came out to the parade. Well, that's but, accounting for people that... Right. I mean, you're not going to have all 40,000 people and friends with coming right, either. But that's 5,700 people that are spread out to four miles instead of one mile. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's a, a lot more spread out. I mean... I get that, that but yeah. here again... <laughs> yes, people are... I mean, Play people are already going to have to travel. Uh, don't you think they're going to tick off a lot more residents by people showing up and setting up in their front yards? Or, yeah, I mean, come somebody come up, oh, well, this looks like a good spot. It's open. We'll sit in their driveway. I mean, I don't. Well, I mean, but you're going to have people parking in the street. And people can park. I mean, it's a, it's a public roadway. They can park in the street and sit in there and watch the parade, technically. I don't know. I just don't. I just can't see the big picture of this, I guess. I'm I mean, gonna... you're also going to have a lot of people that aren't going to show up because they don't want to be around people in general. True. It's actually 26 miles. We're changing it from one mile to 26 miles, and each mini parade would probably last maybe a maximum of, what, 20? Less than that, 10, 15 I mean, it's only going to be probably 20 to 30 vehicles. So So 15 minutes max compared to a a little bit over an hour. Which makes the social distancing and being in someone's company a lot less than being an hour of being next to someone tight and jam-packed along 518 versus a shorter period of time being close to someone. If we have that situation in a hot spot, they're only close to each other for you know, 10, 15 minutes versus an hour plus long if they were on 518. And so. we're not closing the streets down we're on just like 518. Do- you know, so they're stuck you know, on 518 until the parades close. The roads aren't going to be closed, so they can leave when the parade passes. Yeah, our, the whole point of this is to try and improve and adhere to social distancing well, as much that. as we can, and I this is know. kind of one of the viable ways to make that happen. So it's kind of it's kind of like when we do the Santa rides and stuff like that. It, it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect, and not everybody's not going to be satisfied. I but totally you know, the best that. we can do is the is the best we can do, and. Unfortunately, the times that we're in, moving from one mile to 26 miles is at least giving people the opportunity to social distance. And then the only thing I was wondering, I mean, I don't mean to be the bad person, but how many people do you think are really going to get out, you know, come outside their own yard and maybe look? They're they're just going to stand up, look, it's gone, come back in the house. I I think doing this is just going to satisfy some people. But in the long run, I think a lot of people are just going to be like, eh, we had a parade. I just have a fear it's going to tick off more people than not. You know how many calls you get to the fire department because, oh, Santa didn't come by my house. Oh, yeah. But and I think that's the magic of social media. We'll publish the, the routes, and that's why people will have to get to the route. It, it, we're not promising that we're going to come in front of everybody's houses. And this is kind of like how the Blue Angels did it. 
They came in, they put out a flyer, they gave everybody a heads up. We're making this pass right through here. That's it. You be there, you find a way to see us, we'll see you. That's it. And I think this is our Blue Angel schedule. This is what we're going to do. Tommy, you are not a Blue Angel. <laughs> Katie's going to be updating everybody where everybody is. <laughs> she apparently has the job. So it's going to allow people to follow, you know, social media. This is where every checkpoint's going to be. And Katie's going to be on the ball for that. Totally. See? We don't want to have to cancel the parade. And that's unheard of in Friends with Zoe. We're, After this, this is our, years. yeah, our next be best option to keep everyone And then also safe. we can, we can say, oh, why, why not do 518? But we don't even know if that permit's going to come through. The state of Texas may say, we're not doing parades. Sorry. And then we don't even have that as an option. So at least this gives us something else. This. No, don't need a permit on this. We're not going to permit this, so. <laughs> and if you look all over the internet, every city around, everywhere from Burleson to, you know, Kerrville, and everybody's canceled all their parades. So I'm wondering if that's because Textots jumped in and said, no, you're not doing it. So we'll see what we get. Does anybody have any other discussions? Hearing none, do we just move on from this? We don't need to make a motion or anything for this one. So. Hey, real, real quick about the parade applicants. Um, I know we talked about, you know, if, so for example, the Corvette Club wants to ride together or they want to ride in certain sections. Um, what if people apply, but they want to ride in their, on their section, but yet we can't have the entire Corvette Club in section four or whatever you know, are we going to think about trying to make changes to that so people that apply can go through their their own residence in their section, or are we just going to do a, hey, we're just going to divide it up evenly and everybody goes which way? And then make that clear in the application that when you apply, this is how it's going to be, and we're going to, we're going to place you in a section so it's evenly distributed within the city. Absolutely. That's my plan. Okay. And I mean, at that point, if they want to participate, if they don't want to participate, that's up to them. But we're going to try to spread it out as much as we can to make each one as similar as possible. You might let at least two around. You said you may not get it. Yeah, I mean, logistically wise, well, it'll depend on how many applicants we get and, and how we can do that. Um, I, I mean, I'm willing to do the best that I can to put people where they want to be but ultimately it's just like when they you know want want to be in the front of the parade you know there's only so many people that could be in the front of the parade before it becomes the back so <laughs> <laughs> so we'll continue to work through the parade and okay. the logistics of it and uh, we'll again we'll be meeting back again here next month and we'll have a final plan that you know you guys can vote on and approve okay all right, so we'll go ahead and move on from that to, oh, wow, evening program. Day program. Do you want to clarify oh, yeah. what's happening with yeah, day program? Yeah, I forgot about day program. <laughs> <laughs> we just, it's simple. There is no day program. We're not going to have a day program, period. There's no end of the park. There's nowhere to go. So we're just going to go ahead and cancel that altogether. Everybody good with that? All right, so now we move on. It's canceled. It's canceled. <laughs> no mas. Uh, just two, what's the plan? Two uh, spots, fireworks, three spots. So we're working on a plan for just uh, providing a fireworks show uh, for the residents in an effort to celebrate our independence. Uh, we're talking to the fireworks company about a possibility of three to two shows or even one show so if we did uh, one show obviously it would be held at centennial if we were able to do two shows then we're looking at the possibility of adding uh, renwick as a second uh, location and then if there's a third show we can actually add the sports park and these three shows would go on simultaneously at the same time start at the same time it would be the exact effect same effect and of course it'd be choreographed to music and we're working out a plan on how we can get that music to uh, the viewers whether it's through an app or through a radio station uh, we're working on logistics as far as so that everyone can actually hear the music choreographed to the fireworks and how do we keep people from not showing up to those so if you 
<laughs> if you use the Renwick site, uh, you have uh, locations where individuals can uh, park, such as the church. You have the uh, Methodist Church there. You have New Hope there. We already utilized those two locations for the uh, bus service, uh, uh, transporting individuals to uh, Centennial when we had our evening program. Uh, so that would satisfy uh, that location. You also have uh, other parking areas nearby, Captain's Corner, all those things in that area. Uh, Kroger could, you know, uh, lend to be parking spaces for the Renwick viewing. Uh, if you would go to the sports park, uh, we've been in communications with the Harbor Church to see if we can have permission for parking there. And then, of course, Centennial, uh, you already have the normal spots where people go, uh, which would be 24-hour fitness, HEB, uh, in and around that area. And then there's also the Lutheran Church that could uh, be used as a viewing site. So we've kind of looked at some of those areas where uh, individuals can park to view the view it. We had discussed um, like Renwick Park going around and trying to make sure that n nobody can come through the fences and all that kind of stuff. What's going to keep the people at Centennial from coming right through? Over, we going to have somebody there. The or same what? thing. Same thing we've done before. We'll Block split up. Off. We'll split up our staff. We'll split up the committee, and we'll go to those places. We'll fence off where we need. Just like Centennial in the past, we've fenced off those locations, and we've also had police presence uh, to prevent individuals from getting close to the fireworks display. We would do the same thing in, in those instance at those locations, making sure that there is a presence via police as well as staff. The sports park's so open, though. How do we, would how would we secure it? Same thing with police. We would have uh, cars uh, situated at uh, certain areas of the of the facility. Obviously, on the corners of uh, Moore Road and 528, and then of course uh, near the uh, animal control entrance to cover that side. And then there's on the back of uh, Moore Road in the sports park in Mandale. We can also have individuals there. Staff will be there also to uh, prevent you know. Uh, pedestrian traffic because Gary's going to need a lot of caution tape to go around <laughs> so James so we had a 20 minute show set up is that what it was told it, about at the, at the it's contract? about an 18 18 minute show okay so how is that going to split up now is it going to be like five minute shows each one no no it would be the same you would get a 16 minute show 16 to 18 minute show at each of the two or three locations no extra cost there is extra cost involved. We're working with the uh, our contractor right now to see what that uh, pricing would come out. And uh, the, the the lady who always shoots it for us is she gonna how is she gonna synchronize everything? I mean, guess that. So we would have to have three different experts there at whatever how many locations we have. If it's two or three, we'll have uh, three uh, or two uh, technical advisors there to uh, shoot those shows and make sure that they all start at the same time. And of course, the shell size and count would be identical. So every show would look the same from wherever you're uh, viewing it from. So the extra cost wouldn't, to me, isn't that big a deal since we're not spending money on virtually anything else except maybe a couple of banners and stuff. Could we extend the shoots to say 10 minutes a piece? Yeah, they're they're all of them are going to be sixteen to fifteen, sixteen to eighteen minutes long. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, sorry, sixteen to eight minutes long. Whether it's one show, eight. no, no, whether it's going to be one show or two shows or three shows, they will all be the same length, count, uh, shell count, as well as the effects. Everything would be the same. Thank you for clarifying. So, would we be all able to alter the shows to do more uh, high projected fireworks and not as many low things since we're not going to have low viewing? Uh, well, for example, at Centennial, we would do away with the, um, the ground effects that we have and we would be able to add more of the uh, high level but we would not be able to increase the shell size. So we would continue to stay with the same amount of shell size that we have at the current Centennial. We would not be able to expand right. that. But we would be able to make sure that most of our fireworks are overhead. And everything, yeah, everything would be overhead. That's the one thing you gotta watch too, is you put a big shell up, your size of your shell determines your fallout. outside right. fallout area. So like going to Renwick, it's gonna be, or yeah, Renwick will be a little different. Now, no offense, Mr. Officer, they're going to be spread out kind of thin if we do three. Is that, is that going to be an issue? I mean, we have, we have issues right now with just one. So if we do two, 
and we spread all the committee and people together, I think we could probably marshal two areas a lot better than going all the way out to the church area. I, I think two would be better for us. And that's a good point. And we're still working out the logistics of all that. Okay. Uh, but, you know, just preventing you with options of what we have to offer from the uh, from our contractor. Okay. Uh, there is a possibility of doing, like I said, one, two or three shows, depending on what we want to what we think we can handle. And if we come under budget, are we going to be able to utilize that for next year? No, no. Oh. Can we use it for Christmas? No. So we're we actually the amusement spend. ride vendor. We do have a deposit with him. Um, and he agreed to move it to Santa in the Park since we use him for Santa in the Park as well. Okay. And yeah, we're good at covering, on fire department size, we're well, good at better. covering anywhere. We can do all three if you want in. We can definitely do two with not a problem. Barbara's asking about the band. Yes, I was going to mention that next. So, um, I originally talked to the band uh, several weeks ago just to check in with them, one, to see how they were doing health-wise, and then two, to see if they were still scheduled to be performing not only our gig, but others in and around their, uh, their towns and their schedules. And they are very eager to get back out. Um, so at that point, we hadn't made a decision to cancel. Uh, so now that we're more leaning towards getting uh, rid of the uh, entertainment for, that, for the evening program, I'm gonna give them a call, talk to them, let them know that the city's decided to cancel the event as far as the, uh, um, the uh, entertainment piece of it. And we're gonna ask them to see if they would be willing to extend uh, the deposit that we made as well as the agreement to the 2022 show. We already have a, a band that's scheduled and lined up for 2021. So our plan would be to move them to 2022. Well, it's just dependent on him agreeing because of the, uh, the Act of God clause in the contract you had. Uh, that's all uh, in there, or was that in, included? It is in there, but of course, you know, we'll have to have discussions. This is new to everyone. This is something that you know no one's ever experienced before. So we'll hopefully be able to sit down and come to uh, an agreement as to moving them to our. 2022 show. You good? You good? You have any other info, sir? No. No. Um, t shirts? Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, this is Katie's design, huh? Well, that's her logo. Yeah. And then we just put it on the shirt. Is it on the. For everybody to see, or is no, this good no, enough? this is the last edition. So this is this is what we want to go with for this year. Okay. So obviously, Katie's come up with the design. Here you go. If you want to Would you like me to walk it around? I figured you could. I didn't. I know lost John Scott. So. Oh, he hung up on you. <laughs> so there's the design. If we want to go with these shirts, obviously it doesn't matter whether we have morning or afternoon or evening <laughs> shirts this year. So we can have these just for. Grand and what safe. color does the committee want? Red or blue? Red. Red. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. We could actually go tie dye this year and be okay. <laughs> so if everybody agrees on that, we'll show a hands on. Everybody in favor of red? Red, show of hands. Red. 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 I know. This is a Nike special breathable shirt. Or it's just a regular 100% cotton. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we have those, right? So, the cups in. What? The cups yeah. under the shelf? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we're still doing that. So, we'll go with the red with the uh, 4th of July Steering Committee on the back, of course. Okay. So, at the next meeting, Kim will have a, a sheet going around for everybody to give sizes and. Unless you want to do it now, just have everybody write it on the back. I'll send an email out. Okay. 
Hey, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I just want to make sure we clear up something and make sure it's kind of on record and that everyone agrees to the same. When it comes to the parade and parade entries, we're not going to have any bikes or any walkers. This is strictly just vehicles. No so I just want to make sure everybody understands that. Right. Yeah. Right. It definitely couldn't do it through, unless, well, that opens another basket. If you have a subdivision say, hey, can we do a golf cart parade? No, nope, don't want any of that either. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow, that is ooh, an hour. That's Do we still right. have uh, access to the gators? Is, is that going to be a problem? We're good on that? For what? Yeah. Hmm? We may have them follow up. Them I, think, the I think we will need to have staff, like Stacy mentioned, we'll need to have staff present at each of those seven locations. So, you know, to help make sure it's organized, get them started, get them, you know, going at the same time. So uh, just like we do on 518 where we're at the end of the parade, so to speak, we would have staff at the end in one or two of those Kubotas, uh, you know, thanking everyone. So this is also gonna save you on from getting cars and stuff, or do we need to worry about that? No cars. Yeah. No, no cars? No. Nothing? Let them choose what they want to ride in the parade, their little mini parade in? Yeah, just because of the times that we're in right now, we're not sure if a dealership would be even be willing to loan us their vehicles. So at this point, we're just gonna ask the dignitaries and our grand marshals to provide their own vehicles. I'm sure they know someone around town that has a cool car that, you know, that they can, uh, you know, have borrow to be a part of the parade okay as far as using the kubotas we're figuring the uh, committee can uh, finish each parade um, and uh, i'm getting a quote from barbara uh, for a 125th anniversary commemorative coin that maybe we can hand out to the um, parade viewers um, well you said wooden yeah not coin. coins <laughs> yeah wooden coin well, I got a bunch of different options, so. What um, do y'all think about that? Yeah. With gloves. <laughs> I was gonna ask a question. Oh, should we just, should we just disregard the Grand Marshal part for this year? And just, if nothing else on the banners, we can say, you know, you residents are our Grand Marshal this year. I mean, I, if we got the astronauts canceled already, some of them, all but what, one? And we only have the one, Mrs. Whitaker. Shouldn't we just? We're thinking of assigning a, committee, a council member for each parade. So that's why we have seven. Right. So basically, they would be leading the parade. I'm the grand chairman for each parade. Mm -hmm. But we've never had a council member as a grand marshal before. <laughs> that now seems kind of unfair because we were asked for somebody else to be grand marshal who didn't get recognized as serving on the council forever. So that. I don't think we should label it yeah. Grand Marshal. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well, we're nixing the theme as well, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I don't so think I, that's a big deal. I won't even, I, I wouldn't even recognize the Grand Marshal anyways with it being so different, you know? Just yeah. a like we said parade. before, we only have a future Grand Marshal. Yeah. We never and we, and received any entries. And weren't we going to have an emergency vehicle do the front of all of them? Some type of emergency vehicle? Yeah. So, I mean. We'll wake everybody up first. Okay. Anybody have any other information or anything they'd like to talk about? Well, do we need to vote on that to officially? Well, well I, I think we should let the mayor know first. Yeah. yeah. I think we also tabled the discussion of parade until we find out from TxDOT mm -hmm. what, what the we'll decision is. We'll move to is, our so. next meeting. Okay. When will our next meeting be? Very soon. Uh, after we find out if we got it approved or not for the tech stop permit. So you said it's something, yeah, I was going to say it's in two weeks, so we probably look at something like the third or something. I think that would, I mean, that's a. That's two weeks exactly. Yeah, so you're going to do June, June 10th? 10th? Yeah, do June 10th. Mm. What now? Body skies messes up. Okay. All right, so we'll move everything to June 10th. We'll wait discussion on uh, further actions. So I'm looking at everything. Yeah, that's it. All right.
I got your motion to uh, call a meeting and adjourn. I make a motion we close the meeting or adjourn the meeting. Anybody second it? I'll second. That's because there's somebody with a mic. <laughs> I have third. third. All right. We're good to go. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.